Hey guys, welcome back to Crypto World's channel. I'm the Crypto Sherpa, bringing you some weekly crypto news articles. And as you can tell, I'm not in the office. <laughs> I'm trying something new where we just walk around some beautiful locations, talk about some cryptocurrency stories that happened this week, and it makes it a little bit more entertaining. And then if you want to have the full article on like what I'm covering, check out my channel and I have the article, me reading it to you. But let's just go over like the little bits of it. Right now, I am in Huntington Beach, California in Central Park. I've grew up here my entire life and yeah, it's very beautiful down here, especially early in the morning. Also, happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. You guys deserve it. You guys raised us. <laughs> You gave birth to us, it's like, you are amazing mothers out there. So yes, happy Mother's Day. And yeah, let's go over some crypto news. What's been going on? Well, first up, uh, it's a bloodbath, <laughs> but this is fine. There's an article that goes over this. It goes like, why is it in the red right now? Well, people seem to forget, like when they buy high, they think it's gonna go up forever. And then when it starts dipping, some people go, oh my gosh, it's not going, going to keep going down. But that's, a, that's how this market works. It's volat volatility. And so you just gotta be able to prepare for it. Just not forget about it. Just try to dollar cost average into it. But what is causing this bloodbath going on right now? Well, there's multiple reasons. Like, first off, I say, in my opinion, it's mostly the traders out there doing it, having some manipulation right now, but eventually their time will end as the scarcity of Bitcoin goes down. But what's causing it in the article goes, it's like we got the Ukraine-Russia war going on. We got, china and another covid lockdown so that's kind of preventing it going uh, what else did they say oof so china russia oh man there was so much more to that article if i wish i could remember <laughs> but it's like those are like the main things of what's going on with it like russia covid like everything in the world happening right now oh yeah inflation rates that's was it because the fed just raised 50 points so yeah everything is like really <laughs> like having a role on why the markets are down but it's not just cryptocurrencies it is the is the whole world real estate oh my gosh like those numbers are going up but they cannot sustain honestly there's like so many houses down here in cali going for 1.2 million 1.3 like people go oh next month there'll be 2.2 but it's like really how who's buying these houses right now so that's going to eventually crash when everyone stops pushing money into there <laughs> Fed will stop putting money into like the stock market. It's, it's going to be crazy. So just be sure you are set and what you got with cryptos, precious metals, and any extra cash on hand. Like don't be don't be worried or don't be let out in the rain if something happens and banks shut down and then you can't get access to your money. So have some very liquid stuff on you, and that's why I love cryptocurrencies. <laughs> so. Hmm. Ooh, oh man, so many spider webs in this little flower shop. Pretty, pretty nice and beautiful in here. Really calm, relaxing. Here are the geese everywhere. But uh, what else is going on in cryptocurrencies this week? So much. So, like we had uh, in Portugal, uh, someone made a straight through purchase with Bitcoin on a house. Well, that's right. That's actually a historic moment for Portugal. Uh, first time ever a house was paid for with Bitcoin. The price was three Bitcoin and what the article was over, went over, said the importance of how amazing this was because there was no need to convert into euros at all. The person was like, I want that house. And like, they did all the contracts, everything. It was a little faster, so you didn't need to put in bank information or anything. And yeah, so like they said, yep, we want to buy this house. We'll give you three Bitcoin for it. And the contractor, realtor signed up the papers, saved a few steps. And the next thing you know, bam, the person bought a house. So this is crazy. Bitcoin getting used in the real world. Nobody wants to be like the pizza guy in the past going, why are you spending it now? But it's like, this is great. This is just showing like Bitcoin's here. It's being used around the world and on physical items. You can actually touch it. Most people would be like, oh no, like I can't touch it. Like I can't touch this tree right here. Like if I can't touch it, it's not real. That's like how the old guys think. Was it Charles Munger? <laughs> he was saying that doing his hate thing on Bitcoin this week. <laughs> but uh, no, it's like, now they're literally trading it and it's tracked on the blockchain itself. So you can look in the blockchain, 
see that transaction, see the exact date when it happened, and you'll be like, okay, so that person bought a house without the need of an intermediary. There is no bank involved with it. So that is just awesome. I love it. <laughs> and like soon that's gonna happen with more and more cryptocurrencies out there. Like some, who knows, people might want to get use Divi, Cardano, uh, Ethereum. It's like, it's gonna be pretty cool. <laughs> But yeah, so that was some pretty good news happening this week. Just more and more adoption. And hmm, what else? Let's see. Uh, oh yeah, Dubai still <laughs> had a nice article out there. If you guys aren't keeping up with what's happening in Dubai, ooh, oh man, so much. All these crypto industries and businesses are flocking over there because they have such great deals on like no capital gains or something. And then it's like less regulations on cryptocurrency. So you have all these crypto businesses flocking over there. And if you got the businesses out there, that's where the money's going to be being spent. So when you got states like us, the United States, Canada, Europe, all trying to regulate this cryptocurrency, like they're just making people want to flee and go, you know what? We're capitalists. We want to make some money. So we're going to leave you, but you can still use our product. That's fine. So they just lost out on it instead of having them here. So yeah, Dubai is, whew, they're flocking. Like you got the Divi team over there. You got FTX, you got, I think Binance. I think Binance is there, unless I'm getting that one confused with a French deal. You got BitTrue, I think Coinbase is heading over there too. So yeah, things are going <laughs> pretty good for Dubai, the Middle East, and even South America. These are the two top most adopting countries for cryptocurrency and cryptocurrency businesses. So look for them in the future for big things to happen. Also in the news, uh, we got Cardano and Charles Hoskins name pop up where if you were to actually take all the ADA locked away in staking vaults, they don't count those if you didn't realize, Cardano would have the third highest total value locked in uh, DeFi and liquidity pools out there. So that's pretty cool to know because they don't count it because, what is it? They have a, like the staking pool, it's liquid. You can easily move in and out of your tokens. Like if you don't want to stake anymore, you can just take it out. There's no lock-in time period for that. So that's why they don't count it as to truly total value locked because like usually with the liquidity pools out there you have and some staking pools that require you to have a certain time period of being locked and then you can't take out your coins for etc amount of time but with, with cardano you don't have to do that so it's one of those nice ones where it's just freely movable like times are up it's like oh i think we should trade then let me get that out so very nice so that was a pretty interesting article out there <laughs> Very good read, very insightful for those of you who hold Cardano. It's like, you know what? That is actually some really great news for us because <laughs> yeah, people are holding it. They're not selling it. So, woo. And I believe speaking of Cardano, that's going to be one of ours, Crypto World, first staking pools that we're going to be hosting. Uh, I think Dan is working on it. I forgot who's exactly working on the staking part. Could be Rudy. <laughs> but uh, it is, yeah, that's going to be first. So if you don't want to run your own staking vault or, or node operator you know we just let us hold on to it run it for you and we just take a small percentage of fee that's how all liquidity pools and pool miners work there's a fee taken for the person actually running the node their electricity costs yada 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 <laughs> so yeah so that's very exciting for crypto world Woo! <laughs> and hmm let's see i'm on the amplifier right now so many times i've had church in here <laughs> very very nice actually have a little group meetings. I should probably have one out here. Crypto World and Crypto Sherpas outdoor meeting in Huntington Beach. <laughs> uh, funny. But yeah, so, so much stuff happening. Hmm. I'm gonna continue walking. So speaking of uh, staking and contracts like that, Ethereum actually passed a new milestone. They got t over 10% of their supply uh, locked away in an Ethereum 2.0 contract. So that's an awesome, that's huge. They are making their way to transition from a proof of work consensus mechanism to proof of stake. It's all in the testing phases. They're still working out the codes, the kinks, making sure everything runs smoothly to get what they ideally want. Uh, it's me tripping, had a good video on his channel about the difference and how it's gonna be transitioning, like where the mainnet blockchain is still keeping track while the proof of stake one is making all the consensus. So he does a great video on it. Check out his channel to get 
a full on review on that, but yeah, that was a news article that popped up and <laughs> pretty cool. People are starting to slowly more and more understand staking vaults, how to earn a passive income through it, and yeah, this is a great to see. <laughs> hmm. And let's see, also in the news, uh, Data Labs and Sony, they're going to be helping them out create a 3D NFT, which doesn't need the requirement of 3D glasses or anything. So that is huge. Sony is a big time player in the tech industry and having Theta Labs be a part of that is, whew, so that's a, that's pretty cool to look forward to. Also, Litecoin, after 12 years or uh, four years, <laughs> it is officially locked in and Mimblewimble is going to be added to the Litecoin net network. So basically that means Litecoin's going to become a private coin and whew, no more can people see what's in your wallet and that's the beauty of it because right now blockchain technology it's open anybody can see who has what in your wallet as long as they have this uh, public address then you just go on the blockchain take a look at it and whew, you can see how much they got so Mimble Wimble is going to uh, <laughs> hide that it's in their software it's like an extension so it's not changing the original blockchain code so yeah, you can make a transaction. I send you five Litecoin. And even though you have my public address, you cannot see how much is in my wallet. So very exciting times. That should be activated in the code on May 19th. And if you want to follow more, check out their telegram for Mimblewimble. So woo, stay up to date. You can see Charlie Lee is in there. He is a creator of Litecoin. Litecoin, there's only 48 million tokens out there ever. It's like the little brother do Bitcoin. They are four times supply, four times faster. <laughs> and yeah, so very exciting. And then with this technology, since Litecoin's a hard fork of Bitcoin, it can theoretically move over to the block Bitcoin blockchain as well. And now boom, private Bitcoin transactions. <laughs> so yeah, this technology just keeps increasing and updating, becoming new, becoming better. It's so great to be a part of this. I love cryptos and blockchain, just hearing this news. <laughs> and then let's see, so we got Sony Labs, we had Ethereum 10%, Cardano, could have the third highest largest, uh, Bloodbath, uh, what else is going on? Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh man, uh, how can I forget? Uh, California Governor Newsom has to chime in and go, we want regulations on cryptocurrencies. So <laughs> California just announced they're gonna to try to regulate crypto. They don't know how they're going to. They're going, we just wanna make sure our people are safe, they're secure, they know where their money is, and no one's getting swindled out of everything. So good luck, Newsom. Like, it's not gonna happen. The only thing you can control are decentralized entities out there. So Coinbase, BitTrue, KuCoin, any exchange you use, that's a centralized entity, and Fed coins. If your local state government comes out with a CBDC, then mm -hmm, you can regulate that, go for it. And then there's also news articles about uh, US wanting to regulate stable coins, so that could be potentially on your hands too. But yep, California Newsom announced this week that he's going to regulate cryptocurrencies in California, so <laughs> good luck, sir. Good luck. <laughs> Uh, that's why I said like in the beginning of the article of Dubai, it's like it's such a booming hotspot right now. You're going to spread regulations here in the States. You're just going to anybody here in Cali who wants to start a crypto business, they're going to take their business elsewhere because we don't want to be regulated. We, want, we don't want to get taxed 50 percent, 30 percent, whatever you're going to make. So, yeah, keep that in mind, people. You're going to see a lot of businesses move uh, across country for better gains. All right, so uh, more news on how cryptocurrencies are being used to help the people, because that's what it's for, is 100,000 Cubans are using blockchain and cryptocurrencies right now because they're sending funds over to their families across the sea. Most of these people also don't even have bank accounts because they didn't have access to it. I think in Cuba it's under run by a communist nation, so having cryptocurrencies gives them a little bit more freedom if they can hold it and secure it properly but yeah uh, so you have some of their families come to the states or over the seas and they work for money and send it back to their families to try to help them out and 
usually the traditional way how it used to work was they take their they earn their money they had to wire transfer from their bank it would go over sea border transactions and then it goes to the other person's bank and then they can get it that and that could take weeks to months on end to get that money so and also each time it touched their bank the over the seas fee and then the other person's bank that was fees being added up to for them sending money over to their families and that is not good that's not cool so thanks to bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies blockchain technology we don't need those intermediaries anymore cryptocurrencies are borderless they're peer-to-peer -peer. that's what makes them so amazing so these families all they have to do is buy some bitcoin load it to their wallet have their family send them their, their public address on their cryptocurrency wallet and once they hit send maybe i'll take a couple minutes could take half an hour if it's bitcoin fan the blockchain and how slow it is but like they got their money that is pretty fast <laughs> compared to days months weeks to when they used to be able to get their money so whew. so way to go uh cubans for taking back a little bit of your freedom and this can happen all around the world anybody can use this you don't need access to a bank to be in control of your finances so i love articles like that take a little seat here Whew, it's kind of didn't realize how exhausting it is like walking and talking so very fun hope you guys like the style of video <laughs> but let's see what else is happening uh let's see the fed raises 50 points so inflation happening there and i mean see it affecting the crypto market so that was a reason why we're in the bloodbath just one of them there's multiple reasons out there causing it uh let's see i covered gavin newsom Oh, uh, uh, Anthony Scaramucci, Sky Bridge, uh, says that this next election will definitely be run on a pro-crypto stance. So <laughs> I see it. I believe it. Like, people are getting involved in cryptocurrencies faster than ever. They're adopting it. We're getting so many people involved in it. And <laughs> so you got to think, one's got to think, the next presidential election, they're going to say, or they're gonna they're gonna run or they're gonna be against cryptocurrency policies and holding it so yeah look out for that people that's from anthony scaramucci and whew. <laughs> but i totally agree with that like it's true yeah because like, yeah the adoption people are using it and if you, the common person out there they see like their presidential candidate elect or their you know, uh, elect presidential candidate is <laughs> I go, oh, this guy's for cryptos? Yeah, I kind of like him. I want to vote for him. So that's how most people would think. So definitely expect a pro-crypto president in this next cycle. So that's about two years away, one year before I start hearing about it. So pretty exciting. Also, during this week of the Lowe's news, like I think I mentioned Charlie Munger, or that was in a, another clip I recorded and didn't think it was worthy of being in here. But yeah, Charlie Munger spread more fear, uncertainty, and doubt. And his hate and also just no understanding of cryptocurrencies he said oh, i was so stupid like he has like a tweet or just a saying going like i wouldn't buy all the bitcoin for 25 dollars it's like okay i think michael saylor had a response i would buy your bitcoin for 25 dollars <laughs> so pretty funny <clears throat> but he just goes on at his weekly board meeting or monthly board meeting for which one it was but he just like goes on going yeah like what is bitcoin like it's nothing like it's invisible it's magic and it's like what gives it value like you can't touch it you can't hold it but what about the uh, article where someone just bought a house in portugal for three bitcoin you can touch that house and you use bitcoin for it so there's that value and then yeah what call it gives bitcoin its value from the miner rigs the electricity it takes to use it like that's where all the value is coming from for it and also just people using it but yeah munger just does not like he's an old dinosaur who made his money off of coca-cola and he was late on the big tech technologies so when you listen to him just take it with a grain of salt uh, he made money in other industries but nobody knows the futures of everything <laughs> so huh. let's see so that was that news and let's see square and next is like a game company they sold uh <laughs> they sold Tomb Raider, so that was <laughs> that was pretty cool. That was fun. So like they're investing more into blockchain gaming technology, and that, that's going to be a huge boom. You have X like CEO or X Nintendo uh, CEO America Division. He spread his love for 
<clears throat> he's on his left for like blockchain gaming saying yeah it's going to be something in the future and then i've been in a couple forums this week talking about it discussing if you were going yeah like it's going to be big but you got to base crypto games outside cryptocurrencies make it a game that's fun that people are going to play and then somehow incorporate cryptocurrencies into it and that's really truly how it is you want someone who's going to be playing your game for years months and then <laughs> look at candy crush how many people have ever put so much money into that game just get a couple of extra bombs bubbles to continue on <laughs> So, yeah, and <clears throat> I think I'm going to finish off this video with Crypto.com. <laughs> Have you heard about that this week? They pissed off so many, so many of their community members out there because they slashed the Crypto.com CRO rewards card. It was like a prepaid metal card. They had different colors, levels of how much CRO tokens you had to stake into it. But you got some pretty decent returns from like 2% being the minimum, the lowest. All it's like 8%. I think, I don't think they went up to like 14%, but they were some pretty good deals on the levels. But they just announced that they got rid of that deal. <laughs> now it's like the lowest cards don't get you anything. <laughs> 0%. Like the second highest will get you 1%. And like up to the very highest will get you two three four percent so <laughs> they pissed off so much like on the nine gag community reddit center you see all these memes people tossing their cro token outside <laughs> like or in the trash and just throwing it away it's like this card's useless now <laughs> like if i spend my cryptos i'm not getting anything in return it's stupid and now like the staking vaults and then a couple of days later they re they changed up those rules a bit made them more about staking itself so if you stake cro you get this percentage amount <laughs> but yeah don't piss off your community but that's a centralized entity they can do that to you if you want to that's why it's nice having some decentralized networks some true DeFi, decentralized finance uh area dexes non-custodial wallets like being control your cryptos that way you just know what's up nothing's going to be changing it it's in the code and everything so yeah that was a very <laughs> that was a very funny article I don't have any CRO tokens. I think I tried to get it. My card I prefer is the Litecoin Visa debit card. Like it's just based off the volatility of Litecoin. So if Litecoin goes up, my money in there goes up. You just load it with Litecoin, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Bitcoin Classic, or Bitcoin Cash, but it's all valued off of Litecoin. So that's why I like that card. Very simple. I can I know what's happening. If Litecoin's low, it's like, oh, don't want to spend money today. Nah. Or if it goes up, hey, there's my free lunch. Awesome. <laughs> so that's what I use for spending my cryptocurrencies so yeah that's gonna do it people i hope you like the style next week i will try it maybe i'll do this at the dog beach take my dogs out there and then but i'm just gonna be trying out new locations walking around giving you some nice scenery hope you guys like like it hope you were <laughs> hope you stuck around I like listening to the news this way and yeah so hope everyone is safe stays has a fantastic mother's day also if you haven't checked out our WeFunder account, I got links down below. Give it a check. I think we're at $50,000 right now, which is pretty cool. Now we got sent out to every person on WeFunder to take a look at it. So yeah, check out Crypto World's WeFunder. Also check out our website if you need help consulting with cryptocurrencies getting started. We got uh, people on there and classes that can help you out. So thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget that thumbs up on your way out. And until next time, the Crypto Sherpa is out.